Welcome back, everybody, to the St. Grimmy FM channel. Today, we are going to be discussing our first steps into life as manager of Leicester City. If you haven't been here before, we do have eight episodes for you to try and, and taste and get a little taste of the St. Grimmy experience with our first manager's position in the FM23 beta as Leon. And as you probably can tell, because I'm now with Leicester, that didn't go so well. There are eight episodes, up and down form, twists, turns, all the drama. So if you want to go check them out first uh, or start here, perfectly acceptable, whichever you would like to do. But always, always remember to like, share and subscribe. Now, with that being said, we have taken our first steps as Leicester manager and we have played quite a few games. So there is a lot to update you on. And yeah, I think the only thing we need to do is get right into it. So, as you can see, we have played 33 games of the season so far. When we joined, we were struggling. We were near the bottom. We were in the relegation fight. We were Around here, we were 19th. A few points from safety. And to say it's not been easy to, at the start would be an understatement. Trying to find the right formation, the right tactics for this team has been something I've struggled with. To be honest, I've struggled with quite a bit during the FM23 beta defensively. And thankfully, I've managed to find something which is keeping the amount of goals we're conceding quite low now. So, with that being said, let's get let's take a look into the fixtures and see how we've done. So, when we took over, our first game was against Liverpool. And it was a tight game, and we drew, and we lost two one. Sorry, uh, to Liverpool, which is to be expected. We didn't actually win our first game until we played Southampton in our third league game. Um, and managed to win four one. We got a bit, we got a bit of an easy ride out of that one. Um, because after going two 0 up in the first ten minutes, Ward Prowse ended up getting sent off. And then, as you can see from the rest of December, we didn't win any more games. Our form was middling, and we weren't doing that great. We then got into the new year and again, it was more of the same, really inconsistent. And we won 2-0 against Norwich, which we would expect to do considering they at the time they were down in the fight with us. But then we had two really bad results. We lost 7-1 to Brighton. We just, capitu we just totally capitulated in that first half. Um, and then second half wasn't much better. Um, seven one to Brighton is an absolutely shocking result, and I don't. And that was kind of the catalyst of me trying to change things. Didn't improve much in the FA Cup third round. We took an early exit in the FA Cup. We lost four 0 to Liverpool, trying something a little bit different. But when I put my tactic in and I changed things to a four five one and changed things around a little bit defensively, you're going to see how much we've improved since this point. So, if I show you this now, and you show you this run of the form between the middle, well, middle to back end of January, all the way through to the back end of April, where we've lost, just lost to Man City, that is a hella impressive run of form, considering as well, we were in the relegation fight, and we were basically told, try and keep us up. That was what the board of directors told us, try and keep us up as best you can. So we go to, we play Newcastle, and we win. And we lose to Everton at home. So again, more frustration. And I was thinking, do I change the tactic? And I was like, no, we keep the tactic. We just need to maybe change the mentality a bit. So I put us onto balanced instead of positive and attacking like I was trying to do. I was trying to force us scoring goals. But then we go on this run where we had three games against relegation candidates and basically got a goal fairly early on. And well, apart from the Leeds game where it was Vardy, um, scoring the 70th minute against Leeds and we just held on. We found a way. We found a way to win. We then go and play United at home and win 2-0. Two, two draws against the Chelsea and Tottenham teams isn't anything to shrug at. And then we go on another good bit of part of the run. We managed to beat Liverpool. We turned it round. Now, of course, if you want to see any of these matches and you want to see how this happened or if you want to see what happened live, go check out my Twitch because over at St. Grimmy on Twitch, 
I streamed all this. So, again, there's a lot of stuff to watch. Um, It was about two hours and 45 minutes, so I realise that is a lot to watch, which is why I'm putting this episode up to try and explain, obviously, what's happened and what the results were like, and then, obviously, we're going to play the Southampton game as well. Um, But, yeah, and we had a great run of form. Managing to beat Liverpool at Anfield, I think, pretty much caps off that run. Unfortunately, we did lose We did lo- lose our 10-game unbeaten run um, to Man City with Erlen Haaland scoring two goals in the second half. But again, we played well against Man City. It's probably in my saves that I've tried or in my simulations that I've done, that's probably the best I've done against Man City. I've Some of my teams have been battered like 4, 5, 6 nil by Man City. So absolutely brilliant in terms of, of where we've ended up. And, and if you actually take a look at the league... So if you take a look at the league table as we are now, it's the 13th position that we currently sit in. We're on the same points as Newcastle. We're one behind Chelsea and we're only four behind United. Honestly, that City loss has really destabilised us shooting up the table because if we'd got a result or if we'd beaten City, we'd be above Chelsea and we'd be right in the fight with four points behind Tottenham to get into the Conference League. So it really has mucked things up. But I do want to show you one thing. So, if we go the first half of the season, this is how it looks. We were fir- we were down here in 15th, 17 points in total. Only four points separating us from relegation. And obviously shows you how bad we've done and the job we've had to do coming in into this team. Now, take a look at the second half of the season. And we're top four. We're top four by a point over Everton, but we're still top four. And that shows you the turnaround we've had since the end of January and how great we've been. And honestly, I don't know how we've done it because we've had so many injuries and we've had so many people out. Like It's it's really difficult to understand how, how this has happened. But I'm appreciative of the effort for the lads nonetheless. And the other thing is, is that when you look at the squad and you see who we've got, I brought in Nick Pope in the January transfer window. That's the only signing I've made. In terms of loan signings, however, I brought in Reese Nelson and I brought in Liam Delap. They haven't really done much for me, but they've brought some rotation options, which has really helped. Reese Nelson, I can sign for like 7.6 million at the end of the loan. Liam Delap, I'm not going to sign because he's like 30, 40 million. But we might get him in on another loan to try and develop him a little bit further and see if he does something for us. But the other thing as well is there are going to be a few players that are probably going to want out. We've got the likes of Tielemans, who's wanted by Barca, Real Madrid. We've got Castagna, who's wanted by Atletico. Um, Madison's wanted by Spurs. There's a few players in there. So what I'm trying to say is we are going to get some funds for next season to try and revitalize the squad. And there's a few players I'm probably going to try and get rid of. The likes of Brian Gill. Brian Gill, we bought for... I didn't buy... Leicester themselves bought for 36 million and spent their entire transfer budget on one player for 36 million and Brian Gill. And to be honest, he's been god awful. He's done bugger all for me and he's done bugger all for Leicester. So that's like potentially 30 million we're getting getting back in our pockets. The likes of Marco Brighton are going to be going, so we're going to get his wages back. We're probably going to be selling FaZe because he wants out, so we're probably going to get close to 30 million for him. Pereira, another one who's been in and out of the squad because of injury. Probably get rid of him. Here, there's another eight or nine million. So you can see we're going to get about probably 60, 70 million at least from sales. And our expected total next year to get is about 30 million. And we've got a pretty good wage budget as well. So there's a chance we'll be able to really refresh in the squad and hopefully kick on next season and maybe get into that top half of the table and fight for some European spots. It's a lot to it's a lot to go from, and it's a lot to assume at this point. But considering how we've done in the first that sort of first part of our life as Leicester manager, I think there's a huge possibility we can do that. The challenge is going to be in the second season with them, um, in the 24-25 season, is trying to keep hold of those bigger players, your Tielemans, your Madisons. If we keep hold of them, I think we'll be all right. That's going to be a big ask because big teams are going to want them and they're going to want to go. And I will try my utmost to try and keep hold of them. But if not, we're going to make sure we bleed them dry in terms of transfer money 
as much as possible so we can bring in some like for like replacements or some decent equivalents um, to try and continue this positive momentum we've managed to find with Leicester. Now, with that being said, we do need to play a game um, and that game is going to be at Southampton. So, that being said, I'm going to go load up the game. I'll come back to you in a second. You go get yourself a brew, do what you need to do, and I'll see you in a second. So here we are then, ladies and gentlemen. We are starting our game now against Southampton. And to be honest, I haven't really changed that much. I've changed a couple of the forwards. Um, we've put Dak on the bench and moved Harvey Barnes onto the bench because they were lagging a little bit in terms of the fitness. So Jamie Vardy and Brian Gill come in. And as you can see, we start with Nick Pope, Pereira, Faze, Soyunku, Kistan, Madison, Telemans, Dewsbury Hall, Gill, Ndidi, and Vardy. So we are playing a 4-5-1 or 4-3-3, whichever way you want to describe it. But it is three, three midfielders with Ndidi playing as the anchor um, and Telemans playing as a deep line playmaker or box to box. I can't remember which one off the top of my head now. Which is really awkward. And Madison more than likely playing as an advanced playmaker. Or is he coming in from the right? I don't know. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to check because I can't. I can't even remember my own tactic that I looked at two seconds ago. So let's have a quick look at it before we get going. Whilst we do all the rigmarole, we'll kick off proceedings. Skip it. Pause it. Tactics. Tactics. There we go. That's right. So I forgot about Juice Hall. So yeah. So backline is just your normal backline. Sweeper keeper. Don't remember asking you to do that, Nick. But never mind. Anchor. Is indeed box the boxes, Jewsbury Hall, Telemans is deep line playmaker. Madison's coming in off the right, and to be honest, you're doing absolutely superb there. Uh Gil, I'm giving him a chance, but uh, it, there's every chance he gets there's every chance he gets sub, to be honest. And Vardy is our advanced forward. So that's how we're starting. And let's see how we do. But yeah, as I was saying before, like when you look at the form and stuff, I was getting worried when we got to that seven one with Brighton. When we lost seven one in January, I was getting really worried. We could be on for a second sacking, um, which again is perfectly possible. Obviously, you're in the world of football management. We can easily get sacked. There's no reason we shouldn't have the possibility of getting sacked with the form that we had. We were very inconsistent, but we were start. We were like five points, I think, by that point above the relegation zone with those couple of wins because we'd beaten like to Norwich early in the process um, and like Southampton, who were in or around us as well. So we we managed, and no one below us was winning any points. So we were able to just get a bit of a gap going, and then with this change of formation and change of tactic defensively, we've been able to go on that amazing run and get to the point where we can, you know, oh, we've given a penalty away for goodness' sake. And and you know what it is as well? I've had some issues with FaZe. FaZe has come in and been like, I want to play, I want to play. And then the team's kicked off because I haven't played him when he was playing shocking. And he went on, he's gone, he's been part, he's been, has been the main part of this run. Oh, Nick Pope, you star. Oh, you. <sighs> Maybe not so much a star. <laughs> One nil down to Southampton. But FaZe is, prob is probably going to want to go at the end of this year. And I probably want to get rid of him because he's been a bad influence on the team and, and I've had some hissy fits. So when I sell him, there's probably going to be more people and, and more drama, but it is what it is. I just hope the players don't go on holiday too early now. I don't want us to lose two games in a row after going on that brilliant run. Because um, I found that I found that so far with the FM23 beta. Let me know in the comments if you found this, if you are playing the beta as well, that... You can go on really amazing runs, and then if you lose like one game, it falls apart instantly. Like, and you go on like on a barren run, and the players just don't want to, just can't pick themselves up. I mean, that's ultimately what happened to me with Leon. I had a bad month just before Christmas, and they were saying, if you don't sort yourself out, you're basically out. And then I went on this amazing run by the end of March, and I was like fighting for Champions League places, and then didn't win for like the rest of my time there and end up getting sacked. So hopefully we're not going to have that. We've only got like four or five games left in the season anyway. So hopefully when I get the chance to replenish the squad and bring in some fresh faces and give some like, hopefully some rotation options to the players as well, it means that we can start the season off on the right foot and have a good start and maybe 
have a good season overall rather than struggling down at the bottom like we have done. And I feel like I need to make some changes now because, well, I'll be honest, ladies and gentlemen, the games are having a shocking game. We're not even really, we've not even been in the game really. We've had loads of possession, but we've not been able to generate anything. Vardy with the ball through to Nelson. Can he get, can he do anything? What on earth was that? It's just really frustrating because the momentum was with us and we were getting towards teasing a top 10 finish, but a loss again here and we're probably out of a top 10. Which is kind of frustrating, but Vardy might just save us, but... Tell you what, some of the keepers' saves in bait in this beta have been absolutely outstanding, and that's another one there. Juicy Hall with a corner comes to nothing. Barnes loses it, but gets it back. Come on, boys! It's Southampton. It's Southampton. It's Southampton. Come on, boys! We're better than this. We've been playing better than this for the majority of the season. Well, since I've been here anyway. Not to troop my own trumpet. But there we go. 17 points. We are we are safe. I forgot to mention that before. We are safe. Um, and again, we're still... Chelsea have dropped points. And Newcastle haven't won. So... We can finish... We can finish above these, these big names. After the start we've had, which is just incredible, really. But yeah, I feel like it's, I feel like that's the right place to leave it. Um, planning on streaming again on Sunday night, so if you want to join me, feel free. Would greatly appreciate the support if you can give me some follows on there as well, or you know, like, share, and subscribe as always on YouTube. That would that would be greatly appreciated. Um, by the time I come back to you, we've probably played the rest of the season and we will be, well, we'll probably have done the majority of our transfer business, to be fair, and maybe start kicking off the next season with Leicester, unless something goes horrific and I get sacked. But I can't see that happening. Hopefully. 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 But yeah, we'll see. Uh, as always, guys, thanks very much for all the support. The views have been tremendous. I, I greatly appreciate it with it being a new FM channel, um, how many views I've got so far. I know I am a little guy in terms of in terms of the content creation platform, but I appreciate all the support nonetheless. I'll see you all very soon. And as always, I appreciate you. Thanks very much, guys. Bye.